Okay, just so you know, if, if this is a construction joint for thermal expansion, then, and that's on the block, the bolt wall behind, where is the thermal joint for thermal expansion on the brick face? It's a huge building, huge face, lots of sun, lots of whatever. Where is the thermal expansion for the brick on this face? Um, they had them paint it red, which is a darker color, not, not less, not as reflective. And, or they had them painted red, yeah. Maybe that was part of their choice, 1983. But if this is a control joint, all right, then, then what's going on with that also is a control joint. But control joints have um, a, a reason, you know, to allow for thermal expansion. So to help you uh, be able to triangulate and find your own answers, if you just look up thermal expansion and brickwork, you'll get this answer here. It can course, of course, it can cause uh, cracking of both mortar and bricks, allowing rainwater to penetrate, and then you get expansion and contraction of the uh, water, right? Expanding 17, 19% by volume. So what do we have to control thermal expansion on this brick face? And... Uh, more more importantly, the whole entire structure there. So you go to NIST. This is a NIST document. U.S. Department of Commerce, right? It's August 1941. It talks about thermal expansion of clay building bricks. Remember, this is clay brick. So now you can get, it, get down with it. You can start seeing the range... And I don't know what the range is there, but you guys can do a little work yourself and tell me. They, uh, they, the coefficient of thermal expansion of, of 139 bricks were measured over the range of, and there's a temperature. And they included a, a sample of sand lime, right? Sand lime, uh, 9 of fire clay, 61 of clay, and shale bricks. A sample of sand lime, so it doesn't tell us what sample it is, but the sand lime, all right, I mean the ratios. That's why I said it matters, and you grab some samples of each course and see how they reacted together or played together or did not play together. Remember, they did turn some courses sideways, and those cores are like this. They're, they're, they're very different cores than I've seen around Philadelphia. I have seen these up in Upper New York, a couple of places. So, so let me give you the short answer of their. Uh, sorry, I think I covered the mic. The short answer is they use like nineteen to twenty-one or so bricks in a row. They put them in an oven. They measured, and then they're the different bricks: the clay, the brick, the sand lime brick, the fire clay brick, the shell brick. The clay and shale brick. All right, so there are different types of bricks, which matters with this building also. So each one expands a little bit differently. And they calibrate their tools over and over again, not not trusting their calibrated tools. <laughs> it seems like, you know, that you calibrate and then calibrate and then calibrate and calibrate. Um, this uh, It only took about 30 minutes to bring the bricks up the temperature in this oven. Um, but they were heavy in calibration, and they used a ring-type design to to uh, put the brick inside and then measure for off the ring, which is one of the ways they did it, which is very different. Instead of just a pair of calipers and a straight edge. Just remember, this study is a 1941 study. And this didn't really exist then, but that's their... Paperwork that NIST is publishing it under. So I want you to think of the brick when um, when it doesn't go all the way down to the foundation. Your fractures, so you don't you can't find a source of a settled foundation. But you look into the wall, and you don't find bulging. Pretty much, you just find some fractures like this. And these are indicators of uh, thermal expansion. Um, in this case, it fractured a brick that was dimensionally turned the long way. It went alongside that one, through the middle of that one, and we can see right there that they're, they're consistent. This one is interesting. Um, 
the path hit twice. I can't tell that brick. That brick is, looks like they're using a lot of different bricks there. One looks softer, one looks harder. They look like, uh, you know, you see the curvature of that brick, the chip on that one, um, gap here. I wouldn't quite call it repointing, but some point repointing was done on this, on this, trying to save, but there's some separation gaps. And, I mean, is that blue? So, uh, yeah, I'm starting to think now there's some recycled bricks on here, but that's a soft brick there. You can see it just a weathered brick. Same thing there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the windowsill action going on here. And it looks like a weird replacement window. It looks like it's got a, a, a curved cut in it. So let, let's talk about this right here. The temperatures, low and high. So a high temperature brick has the moisture pretty much, you know, it zeroed out. It, can, it was, it was, um, it was, sorry about the mic. It was quenched by fire, higher heat. So higher heat doesn't affect it as much. Whereas the, uh, the low temperature bricks will expand more. And we don't know. Remember I talked about the, well, it depends where you get these tiles from. Some in, uh, are, are just laid out in the sun to dry. And there's no extra kiln drying. It's the sun's heat that makes this tile stable, if you will. So whatever temperature that was. So imagine you taking to a, a location where the heat increases, it will, it will either stay stable or it won't. Um, because it's beyond its range that it already was um, stressed at in temperature, thermal stress. Uh, there's that document if you're looking for it, um, located on the NIST website. It's not worth your time. So neither of these engineers addressed thermal expansion in their reports. Neither one of them talked about thermal expansion. I showed you the corner of the structure where the bricks are the other wall. Um, the opposing wall going down an alley have a crack going fully down there. Not the foundation. There is indication of thermal expansion. This wall was not rotating away. It was pretty plumb. So that, that looks like a nice one. Now, so the, you do have to put a back of rod in there and you tie them across also, but you, uh, a back of rod and then you put a, uh, like a Cicaflex product on the face of it. There's, a, there's many products, rubber based products even, that will work between the bricks. So here in this um, study slash report, if you will, Evidence from research suggests that vertical movement in the building is the same as that of a horizontal movement. That means you should consider horizontal joints in buildings over four stories. If the building is less than 12 meters, then the brickwork could be laid uninterrupted for the full length. Um, this is their determination. You, you'll find different answers to this, but it, it's based on your brick. All right, Look at that brick, your heat, your temperature, your ranges. And in this case, we have this, uh, the uh, lime mix. So if you get some expansion, some heat, you then get bond breaking if that lime mix does not expand like a rubber band both directions. However, this is expanding. So then you start getting breakage. And with breakage, you then get, um, you're sitting on top of loose lime, um, um, fine sand, if you will. Let's think of it as sand. A roller, little pebbles. And then you get water coming down, and when water comes down, they make those, they lubricate those little pebbles, and sliding off the brick goes out to ne the Neverlands uh, as it's leaning forward. Um, as it is leaning forward, because initially the washout is in the front of the, uh, the uh, soft mortar, and then any other water that makes it back loosens it and it starts sliding, drifting forward, 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 and then ultimately slides out and onto the ground. It's kind of as simple as that. It's kind of as simple as that. That the paint does help. Some people were asking about the paint. Stop that water penetration. It does not stop the thermal because they didn't do anything for that. It did not stop that, but it stopped the water penetration if it was a paint that would allow 
um, breathability and also uh, to stop the water penetration at that at a certain level of, uh, of rain, rainfall, rain contact. So this is a Penn State study, and this is similar to what I was just mentioning to you, that no matter, you're going to get some thermal reaction, some expansion and contraction. Doing so, you're going to get some, you're going to get some stresses going in there between your mortar mix and your brick alone. All right, just think about that. And when they're, they're, they're cooling and, and they gotta, they got to cool down together, expand together and cool down together. That's not happening. When free to form, concrete will expand or contract due to fluctuations in temperatures. Side of the concrete structure should uh, weather, uh, structure whether it's a bridge or a highway or a building does not make it immune to the effects of temperature. Okay? Expansion and contraction Changes, uh, this is the engineering school also. The expansion and contraction with changes in temperatures occur regardless of the structure's cross-section area. In other words, we all, everything expands and contracts. Whether you can read it or not, it's, whether you can read it or not, it's happening. That thermal expansion. Now, it can be controlled by the thicker metals. The, the larger you get to the, the larger metals, you're going to need more of a heat source to get some expansion going on some uh, thermal expansion you know your uh, your tub cast iron tub has a coating on it and it takes you know whatever you put in there sometimes scalding water but it doesn't show cracks right so it can take that that that's not that's within its range just like your pot is within its range of uh, when you're cooking on it and sometimes it's not you cook it into the put something in there it'll tell you the range just say no more than 350 degrees when, and they've got a factor in there, but let's say it reached four and a quarter, it will fracture. It can't expand anymore with the temperature temperature in there, the glass pots or whatever they put in the oven, and then your fracture happens. So I want you to think of this as a cold joint, and no more than you would tell a contractor to put new concrete butting up to new old concrete without an expansion joint, should this also be the same. This should be thought of as control joints um, at, uh, as far as expansion and contraction. This brick is not going to expand and contract like this brick. So th there is the issue. We also have that brick, a new brick over there. It's not going to expand and contract as the other one. I'm just saying that's a factor, all right? The expansion and contraction over the, the building over many years. They do have many elevation changes of like windows. So here's this one. This one's down. These two are up. So you, you get many of uh, elevation changes, um, which gives you these very d different panels on the wall, especially if you're trying to control expansion and contraction, you know, the, the where, do, where do you put it? Here? And then consider this a panel out to here? That's very risky out to that edge without some connection. Um, and again, I told you, I showed you they didn't use any, any, uh, the he uh, helifax type Healy coil of metal, anything to tie it across. I showed you they didn't do that. They just considered this a sound operation by putting in new bricks on the old bricks with this mortar system butting up to here, not thinking of thermal expansion. It's just, it's, this was just completed in May. And it and ultimately this section next to it failed uh, after they dug into it. But the problem is why was so much buckling and all this movement going on? We see a lot of it because it's been undermined by their. There's a fracture. I'll talk about the corner. It's been undermined by well, not not doing repairs over the year, but also by not doing the repairing the the structure correctly as far as my opinion goes the well we know that right if it repaired it correctly it wouldn't have fallen down i think the engineer called for eight inch block this guy is using six inch blocks this means you will not be getting rebar solid cord block although i did see some there i think that this might also might also be a face brick block that he was going to put on there but we see no ties when you go in here you see no ties to tie the even if it was how is he going to put it together it's just you know there, there, are, no, there are no ties there there are ties down this corner where the panel came off i did see some 
located ties uh, for the front face brick. Uh, but this block here is six inch block, presents a six inch. I'd even go as far as saying it's four inch, meaning the dimensions is only four inch, not, not eight inch or six inch. I would say, I'm just going to guess, I can't figure out the pallet size, six inch block, but the, that would give them 12 in the total depth. But that doesn't allow for, you, you got to now bond them two together, and it doesn't allow for solid coring. You don't core these little silly cores here, they're too, too narrow, too thin to get any uh, cover and bondage and, and intent of the strength of the rebar. I don't, I see them there. I, I, I can't see them installed though. I can't see a photograph where she photographs from the top besides that one where that looks like an eight inch block. But I see the material here is six inch. So what's he doing on the job site? And it was mentioned in one of the reports which I talked about in the past that it, um, and these blocks are very different too. They're not, these are, so these blocks cost more money, right? They're 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 more of a face block. They're really very kind of decorative looking. A present as decorative looking face block. If they are, then that means a guy had a lot of extra in the yard, and he's like, hey, you know what? Let's use those over there. He's allowed to do that. They're still structural. Um, and now again, here's that this this joint. But what's tying it together? What's tying these together? And also at the other end where the building collapsed. What was tying those well, amounted to columns together? Columns of brick. So this would be a column of a column here. All right. And that's another column out there. It's not connected. Remember he had dowels that he wanted to put in there. Four of them on each side. Probably insignificant. The way the brick are so weak that it wouldn't be able to... Uh, get the true intent of, of, of the bond and acting as one, the behavior to be one. Um, that's my thoughts. See right here, this block here, I see no clips in them. They're installed. I don't know if he installed them or whoever, whomever installed these. There are no clips to tie the face and the, uh, and whatever is going in. There's no, you don't see metal clips sticking out here where they were going to tie these brick together. This is the face brick, and there's the what presents as the structural brick. It looks pretty plumb to me there. Um, there is some, remember I talked about, there is a detail where you can uh, notch some of the face brick, and then your bond brick back here would stick out just a little bit further, and you sort of into your face brick like that. Well, a couple of these do stick out, you know, in a few in a few places. They stick out further, and that I don't see any mortar on the face of them at all. But they stick out further. I don't know what the reasons for sticking out further, but there's some, you know, some. Uh, I don't know what the intent, or is that just? I don't know why. All right, but I told you there could be that could be the reason. It's just kind of random. I can't quite uh, you know that's not the like the, like this course here, unless they took a BFH, which is a big fucking hammer, and these were sticking out, and they were like, you know what, just clean that up, and they cleaned it off. You know, make it straight, which means now you're losing your ties. Um, but I I would see fractures in the brick, and I would have to see that, and then you see the debris on the ground to, to determine is that what they're doing here. I can't tell. It pixelates too much when we get in there. But we do have some, no, no mortar on the face of these bricks though. That would be, because you would mortar, let's do that cutout again. You would put slap mortar in here and push, push it in also mortar there and mortar there and mortar under the top bed and the, and the bed above it. But this would definitely be chopped out. Um, it, it's, it's not very effective. It's not for this height for sure. So the, the thing is, if only we could find more of the face brick exposed like this, the structural brick, we could look for thermal expansion. Now that you understand what you're looking for, you would be looking for fractures in the in the brick line. An expansion. What I, I, I see this line looks clean. So 
this section here. Um, it's a, I don't know what's behind here, but this section over here is not affected. It seems plumb. And it's not expanding and contracting. It seems stable enough. This is a smaller section there. Same, same there, uh, perhaps, um, but maybe not. We'd have to look at it. Wow. I just find it amazing. Um, so these are just electric conduit drums that they're using as tables. Interesting. Uh, they're not lightweight, so it's interesting that they're on the job site at all. Why are they there? I mean, that's not like a table you would bring just for the hell of it. Um, we see this is supposed to be protecting the electrical, but you can see it's missing. It has a leg here. It's legged at the wall, but no leg down here. So, um, it's, I guess, resting on the gas meters. Just getting a close look at it. Another look, another another bite at the apple. And then we see he puts his, well, it looks like he's putting his block up, you know, pretty much plumb, although you see some variations. This is where they join that wall together, the column area together, and you can see that, mm, it's just butting up against it. There isn't, where's the tie-in? And then um, we see the brick. This brick is not even, uh, pushed back in. So when they put their face brick on this one, they'll have to be further out to accommodate for things like that. Or they take a hammer to it, a chipping hammer, and they knock that face off. And that shit counts. That's the low path of the structural wall. Incidentally, this is not supported. Supported over here, here and here. This is supported here, but this out here, unsupported. It's horrible. But it's not supported. Directly supported. Uh, it depends on the overhang of one brick to the next brick and the weight of the weight loads above. But here's that hollowed out, hollowed out, and that, but that box that we always talked about that we keep that we keep showing up. Let me let me do better than that. Okay, that that's clearly needs to be identified. The engineer has not spoken on this. It's a hollow box for what? What's the intent of that? Is that a, a uh, closed close, um, close box for dropping your laundry down or do laundry? What is it? A trash chute on the outside of the wall? But it dissects the wall, critically so. Critically so. We, if we triangulate this window and their scaffolding, we can start figuring out this has a layer of brick over the face of it. Okay, we can start figuring out what that looks like over there. But that now means if this is the structural brick, what's behind that? What's behind it? One layer of brick? Okay, and then it goes up decoratively. Let's think of the loading now, the steel loading from the structure. Well, it's not here. This is where they have that. It could be, we don't see the steel. Remember I talked about does the steel stick out? Well, this entire image that they have and the other image, I don't see the steel sticking out from that wall. Remember, the one engineer said he, he believes per the um, library images he saw that he has about a two-inch um, position of uh, steel over top of the load-bearing wall. So, you, you, the, uh, two inches isn't the greatest thing to, 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 drive, to drive home about. You get some deflection and... You might have some issues because it does load back to that one. I'm trying to find that steel. So I did some talking and forgot to turn the uh, recording back on. All right, let's see if I can start over again. So that appears to be hollow. It appears no engineer addressed this in any follow-up reports. That this hollow box, I don't know if it's a laundry box, a trash chute, whatever it's, you, you have to know what it's made of to try to figure out its intent. Was it a exterior chimney even? I don't know what it's made of. They do, are not addressing it. It looks like you can peel it back at one point, so maybe it is metal metal working. Nevertheless, it dissects the building. Um, structurally, it dissects the building 
up to however far it goes up. We can triangulate and try to find out where it is when we look at the repair and where they end in this window. And we see and move over to your left a little bit where that column is. That's probably the maybe that's the load bearing steel there. But this this is a, a problem also. So we have thermal expansion, we have division of the building by things like this, by this hollow boxing. We have brick that are not um, that are corbelling in and out. So in other words, this brick is out, but the one behind it is in. Why is that? Did, are they going to let it set and in a few days knock it off? We have some six inch block out there for what reason? I don't know. We have this soft mortars um, um, going on. We have expansion and contraction over a hundred plus years. I don't know what this is. Presents as hollowish also. It might be a piece of steel scaffolding coming from that direction. We have control joints that are expansion joints that are not really done correctly all the way through the building and through the new brick work they put in. We have the new brick butting up against old brick without all expansion joints. And I'm starting to like what the uh, University of PA says. It's, uh, it's the only state where you can say the two initials. When you say Iowa, IA, you say Davenport, IA. Anyway, joints are the most effective way to control cracking. All right, you're going to limit, you can't go beyond the, the joint, but you want to be able to lock that joint in with the next joint below or have it stable enough. Um, where it doesn't, where it, it acts as a column for the full size. That's still with the wall section. This is obviously a slab. If uh, if a sizable section of concrete is not provided with properly spaced joints to accommodate temperature movement, the concrete will crack in a regular pattern related to the temperature and the straight direction, directory. Um, and and this is where you get the weird cracks. Remember, your concrete has a bunch of stone in it. And sometimes it may do this, you know, so you may have stone like that and a solid paste on top. But this might be picking up heat and, well, let's just use one of them, one load path. And this might be like that, you know, depending on how the concrete segregates, the stone, how, they, how much they touch. And they expand and fractures happen. All right, you also have the temperature of the soil below, it's acting as a thermal... Uh, a thermal mm, shock also and you get your fractures of the weird na nature a lot of times people see this curling um, of concrete with that thermal quote shock from underneath so I'll end the video with this to get to get you to look for yourself this is a control joint okay this is how it goes from one side to the next Place multiple places. That's one of the one of the systems. It can slide in and out like a bridge. It can slide in and out. There's many of other ways to do it. To fabricate something like this, and you can just start looking for movement joints and, and enjoy the, go down that line for yourself. Nah, I thought I'd give you more. Here's some more expansion joints. See it near the corner. Uh, that's a very interesting one. Here's one, here's another one, internal wall, there's another one, another one, a, another one, another one up here that's failing, it looks like. There's more here, more here. This one's failing, it's breaking apart. Um, there's one there, there's one that's created by default. There's another one, nice little piano chord, accordion style. All right, with that said, I want you to think that, that, that these engineers, both of them, neither one of them addressed thermal expansion. They are putting back the brick without addressing thermal, thermal expansion. Now that the city require it, um, I like this one at the corner because that one was created by default. Remember that one that goes up the corner of the structure all the way up. Um, so there's one with their existing building tying connecting. 
Okay, there's one there. It's still yet to be closed in. This one is ugly. Let me just say that. Um, so you can look up the different styles. And repointing is not the way to go. You're going to need some, you know, once you've got this crack, you need to address it with some, with some, with some loud, thinking about how you got there. And maybe you've got to continue this, the, the wiring, the <laughs> expansion going all the way across. This is... <laughs> Anyway, so um, the uh, here's one. Here's a continuous one. Here's a continuous one. So it seems like these these engineers out there, at times both of them, didn't address thermal expansion. Didn't come out to the field. They say, hey, what's that? Let's just deal with that. Why'd you put the cut inside? We don't see any of the after action report. Besides, that work looks good. You know, it looks like what I told them to do. That's it. It really didn't discuss the load path as much as the first guy, but the first guy didn't talk about thermal expansion. I'm ending the video. Load this one up, and then I've got to go. I've got to go. You will not get one from me until maybe late tonight or tomorrow. If I can, it'll, if you guys can get me the plans, that'd be great. We can start putting this. If you do that, I'll start. I'll get the building, and we'll start exposing this, where the steel is on the structure. That's my intent to start showing where the steel is on each floor exteriorly on the wall. And let's see if we can map some cracking from there. Then we'll overlay the first repair. Um, first repair is down here that by the doorway. Second repair, which is kind of weird. And in the third repair, we don't. We have a few images, but we have an idea per the collapse how um, they undermine the structure. All right. Take care. Love you. And oh yeah, and the bracing. That bracing on the second guy. I don't know what's going on with that because the first engineer. The engineer that did this section gave him a certain brace detail. He did mention it, though, that he said, similar to my first bracing of this, of, of this. He didn't mention it. He did mention it, but I didn't see it in the re that meant that report. I'd have to reference the other report. But he said, similar to the first one. I don't know if he thought he was going to get bimasonry back again or not. And maybe that's what he thought. If that's bimasonry. I don't know if that was bimasonry to put those supports in. I don't know that. Who put these supports in. In fact, I don't even know if bimasonry put it in or they hired somebody to. So the they were at what, 35 grand for their work. Um, and the second guy was $3,000, which was, I mean, this last guy was $3,000, which says the owner, Alliance, I think. I think I have that correctly. All right, so this is the last one you'll get to today, I think. Um, and unless you guys can get find that drawing for me, a few of you mentioned the drawing from the from the building. Sorry about covering the mic. The uh, few of you mentioned the the uh, drawings are in the library. Of course, I have too, but I have yet to find them. I'm trying to find them. If you can please link me, that would be a great great help. And I won't have phone signal for for many hours, so link me though. I'm not ignoring you. I just don't have phone signal.